Hello, my fine friends. How is everybody doing on this beautiful Friday? Um, it's getting warmer where I live. I sure hope it is where you're living too. That is unless you like the snow. I like the snow, but I, uh, I'm okay with the, uh, summertime coming for sure. So I'm anxious to get on with this story. Um, it made me think of uh, a story kind of near and dear to my heart. But uh, before I get started, I just would like to ask if you enjoy this channel, can you please give it a thumbs up and a subscription if it suits you. I would greatly appreciate it if you, if you don't mind. So this email is titled, An Invisible Bigfoot Growled, Stomped, and chased me oh yeah you know that I couldn't wait to dive into this one. Oh my gosh so she starts out I'm going to tell you right from the start that I'm not good at writing punctuating or spelling for that matter you are the on only the second one besides my partner that I've told about this and I can promise I will probably never speak to anyone else about it again Back in 1989, my partner and I rented a small farmhouse in Nevada. There was a plowed field that we could use to make a garden for ourselves, but we were not allowed to rent it out to any local farmers. If we did, we were told that we would be asked to leave. We even signed a paper saying that we wouldn't. Besides that plowed spot, there were woods that went on for miles. The first year we, we heard hunters quite close to our house, so we spoke to our neighbors and they said it wasn't them. They agreed that they would not put up with strangers hunting so close to our houses. So, with the owner's permission, the neighbors posted no trespassing signs all over the place. There were a couple of years of no one hunting out in the back when we and we were surprised to see so many deer. They were in the plowed fields and in, even in sometimes our backyard. I was surprised when my partner told me he had invited a couple of friends to hunt our rented property instead of hunting their regular spot. What the hell? That was our hunting spot. So I was a little put out, but I didn't say anything. I thought for sure they would get one because we knew the deer were there. Uh, they were in our fields in the morning and sometimes in our backyard. They went out a couple of days and had no luck. Didn't even see a deer. So they opted to go back to their normal spot because they were running out of time and had to get back to work. My partner had his friends coming over on the Sunday to help tear down a dangerous broken down barn. So I decided I was going to get up before the sun rose and go out, out the back and get a deer. I wanted to show those men and especially my partner for choosing to hunt with his buddies over me. I packed my knapsack and left a note that I was going hunting. I went to my favorite spot on a ridge that looked down over an open spot by the creek. The area was mostly open with a few big trees, but surrounding that open spot were big trees and thick brush. Honestly, I thoroughly enjoyed the peacefulness, and at that moment, I didn't even care if I got a deer. I was really enjoying the sounds of the forest waking up. I think I must have dozed off because all of a sudden I realized the sun was up and I could clearly see the forest in the creek. But I realized I couldn't hear any bugs, birds, or squirrels. And I got this weird sensation. I pulled myself further under the tree I was laying under. I was almost scared. I had never felt afraid in my life while hunting. Then I saw it. I was looking at a Bigfoot. I had never even thought about them in my life. 
I probably wouldn't have even known what they were if it weren't for our friends bringing it up when we had a few friends over for New Year's Eve party the year before. Apparently, they had seen some in the area. We all just laughed it off, and most of us excused ourselves to talk about more important things. The biggest animal I'd ever seen was a seven-foot-tall moose, and this, w this thing was bigger. If you look at your door frame in your house, this thing could not fit through it. It was solid black, except I could see the gray skin on its chest. Its head came to a point at the back. It didn't notice me, thank God, so I pulled myself as, back, as far back as I could so I could still see it. It squatted down beside the creek and scooped up water with its huge hands and drank from them over and over. I could clearly see the crack in its rear end. It stood up when it finished drinking and I had this hot fear run through my body. I have never had this kind of fear before. Even just remembering it right now is making me feel the same way. It looked around. A thought came to my head that maybe it could feel me looking at it because it was looking around the same way a human would if it felt uncomfortable. It walked over to a tree and it was looking up like it was looking for something. Then it hit the tree with the side of its fist, and it looked up again. It went to another tree and did the same. A squirrel squealed as it fell. Then it landed. The Bigfoot moved so fast to step on it. It picked it up, tore the head off, and sucked on the bloody neck. Then it ate the body part. I couldn't see it in detail because it turned away and I was so grossed out that I wasn't looking that much anyways. It walked over to the tree that was laying on the ground and started pulling it apart. I think it ate some bugs from it. All of these actions seemed to be so natural for it. I watched it mainly from the back for at least 10 minutes. I felt secure that I was hidden well enough from it because I was way above it. But then I started to notice a god-awful smell, like the smell actually hurt my nose. I even plugged my nose from, to stop it from getting inside. And then I heard a growl from right beside me. This growl came from right beside my ear. I froze in fear, and then I looked at the side uh, looked out the side of my eyes. Nothing. Then I slowly turned my head to the right. There was nothing there. I thought for a split second I was losing my mind. I went back to watching the Bigfoot by the creek. Then I heard the growl again. I felt it right beside my ear. I turned right away to look and there was nothing there in capital letters. Then I heard what sounded like a stomp. I not only heard it, I felt it, and it was right beside me. I knew, even though I couldn't see it, that it was there. I was so terrified to move, but I knew it was warning me, and I had to find the courage to leave. I felt that at any second, that if whatever was beside me was as big as the Bigfoot that I was looking at, that it could step on my head and kill me right there. So I slid back under the pine boughs, and once I was completely covered, I turned around and made a beeline for the trail. I couldn't hear I could hear this thing following me in the woods. Imagine an elephant charging you through the woods. That's what this thing sounded and felt like. Finally I made it to the truck path that leads to our farm. I could see the old barn that the guys would be working on and I started screaming at the top of my lungs, help me, help me. I ran past the barn and I noticed the guys hadn't arrived yet. I ran through the back door and locked it as it shut behind me. I ran through the house shutting and locking all the windows. I got the courage to peek out the kitchen window and I couldn't see anything. 
My partner came down the hall yawning and asking why I was being so loud and noisy. I went to tell him and then I shut up. I remembered how he he said anyone that sees these giant apes in North America is just looking for attention. I just laughed and said, sorry, go back to bed. His friends showed up a little while later and they all went out to work on the barn. Twenty minutes later, my partner came in the house holding my rifle. He asked when I had been outside with my rifle and why the heck had I left my rifle outside. I just broke down and cried. He went outside and a minute later came back in and told me he sent his buddies home so we could talk. That morning I realized that my partner was the kindest man that I could ever ask for. I told him everything, including the fact that I was so scared and running so fast that I dropped my rifle and don't even remember doing it. He told me he believed me. He suggests we never tell this story ever again. My rifle never worked after that for some reason. That made me wonder if I left my rifle under the tree and that Bigfoot who chased me found it and broke it and then left it at the barn. I have no memory of running with it. I've read that Bigfoot will destroy guns. It's just a thought. I have no proof. This is the first time in 31 years that I've told this story again. We stayed in the house for a few more years. We always knew when they were around. The deer always left our property and we would hear them once in a while from our backyard. They would growl and whoop at us like others have reported. Thank you for letting me tell you what happened to me. Anonymous. You are very welcome, Anonymous. I'm glad that we were here for you to tell your story. And you know, we're always here if you need to talk about it further. Um, that's a lot of years that you've kept that inside. 31 years. My goodness. Well, you, you take care of yourself and thank you for sending us your story. So I have another short story to tell. Uh, this one is from Westport, Ontario, um, near County Road 10. I had just woken up and it was a lovely, sunny August morning. So I pulled open the blind and I looked out the window on our second floor of the back of our cabin. I said to my husband, there's a man walking through our woods. And he said, well, let's go see who it is. Then it happened. I suddenly felt really fearful and I said no. After that statement, I have been replaying the site like a full-time video with plenty of questions in my mind. There were no clothes on. And am I ever glad I found your channel? As soon as I looked out, I saw a large dark figure stride out of the forest and into a small grass clearing about 40 to 50 meters from the back of our cabin. The figure was over six feet and was mostly brown, medium brown, with different colored brown patches and one patch of hay colored yellow on its side that stood out in the sun. It walked with a fluid grace and in three long strides crossed the clearing. Then it turned its face towards me for a split second and it had a dark grayish flat face, which to me had no brown patches. Later that morning, we heard crashes and breaking twigs in the forest behind our cabin. And later we heard a wail come from the swamp area, screaming in a, and petrified in a way. I have never, ever heard before. Ugh, that's a pretty scary uh, thought, you know, that you could just look out your window and see something like that. That's, yeah, that's really scary. Most people, you know, they're out in the woods hunting or camping and they, they have their sighting and that's okay. That's where you're supposed to have these sightings. But I think it's kind of interesting that you just opened your 
your curtains to say good morning to the day and you have a Bigfoot out in your woods. That's crazy to me. So anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Um, I'm sure I'll be back here in a couple of days, as you know. But if anybody has any stories that you would like for me to read, please send them in. They are greatly appreciated. So you guys have a wonderful day. Oh, a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you back here in a couple days. Bye-bye for now.